Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Alright, so in this video and in the following two videos, we will be exploring VPC's uh, subnets, private subnet, public subnet and various other resources around VPC like Internet Gateway, NAT Gateway, NAT Instance, Network ACL, Route Tables and so on. So what you get when you create a uh, when you create your AWS account. So by default, you will be given a VPC, uh, uh, some subnets depending on how many availability zones you have. And there is a limit on the number of VPCs you can create per region. So that's five VPCs per region. So that's the default limit. But uh, you can request AWS to increase the limit if you want uh, to use more VPCs. And there's a default limit of 200 subnets per region. And uh, let, let's explore all these together. And I've got uh, my AWS Management Console open. So in a short moment, I'll show you uh, what I got in my default account. All right, so let's talk about the VPC. VPC is a virtual private cloud. For example, in your organization, you've got multiple projects. You can isolate different projects in different networks. So you can deploy them into different virtual private clouds. They are uh, individual separate networks. It's a software defined network. It's a completely separate network, VPC. And uh, within VPC, within a region, you can deploy this VPC across uh, multiple region, multiple availability zones. So two types of subnets. One is a private subnet. The other one is a public subnet. So any EC2 instance you put in a public subnet, Basically, uh, you'll be putting your web servers in a public subnet, uh, which needs to be accessed from the internet and your backend servers like uh, RDS, EC2 instances, databases, everything you will be application servers. It will be in the private subnet, which doesn't require any traffic coming in from your from the internet. All right. So that's private subnet and public subnet. And so public subnets, all the EC2 instances in the public subnet has internet access. And for every VPC that you create, you need to have an internet gateway, all right? So when you create a VPC, which we will see in the next video, uh, there are certain resources that gets created. So when you create a VPC, a network ACL, a default network ACL access control list gets created, a default route table gets created, and an internet gateway gets created. And if you're deploying uh, a private and a public subnet, you will also need to deploy a NAT gateway or a NAT instance. So there are difference between NAT gateway and NAT instance. So NAT gateway is a managed AWS service. NAT instance is something you have to manage. There are differences between the two. So why do we need NAT gateway? For example, all the EC2 instances that you put in your private subnet, if they want internet access, just the outbound internet access, not the inbound. So people from the internet, they won't be able to connect to the instances in your private subnet, but the instances in your private subnet needs to talk to the internet uh, for some reason. For example, the obvious reason would be for patching. So if you want to download software updates, uh, it needs to connect to the internet, uh, connect to a repository, download the updates and so on. So in that case, the internet connection is provided by the NAT gateway. And the important thing here is the NAT gateway needs to be in the public subnet and your private subnet will, all the instances in your private subnet will talk to the NAT gateway to get to the internet, all right? So all the VPC will have an internet gateway attached, just one internet gateway per VPC. And uh, you need to have NAT gateway in order to provide internet access to your instances in your private subnets. All right, so uh, you can create your subnets in different uh, different availability zones. And uh, there is network ACL and a route table. Let's look at the route table. So route tables are a set of rules defined. Uh, basically, they are routes. So when I say uh, in this public subnet, if it wants to access a particular network, uh, which path it should take, how it should, uh, how, how is it going to go to that uh, destination network? So that will be defined in the route table. So one of the uh, default entry in the route table will be any traffic going to the internet will be going through the internet gateway. So that is defined as a rule in the route table. So I will show you the route table uh, in a moment. And then network ACL, so access control list basically. 
uh, network ACLs are at the subnet level. So you might be knowing about the security groups which are applied at the instance level. So this one is applied at the subnet level. <coughs> so network ACL, you can, um, we will do another video about difference between security group and uh, network ACL. So network ACL is like a network firewall. You can define uh, what is allowed into your subnet and what is allowed outside your subnet, what outbound traffic is allowed, what inbound traffic is allowed. You can create as many network ACLs as you want and you attach your network ACL to the individual subnets. So when you create a VPC, a default route table and a default network ACL gets created. And the if you don't specify any custom route table, all the subnets that you've created will get the default route table. All right, so you can create additional route tables and so on. So we will see that all uh, in a moment or in the next video. All right, so that's a, a simple theory. And let's take a look at our management console here. And if I go to VPC, so I haven't created any VPC. So this is my uh, default VPC. I've got my account. In the London region, London region has three availability zones. So we have one VPC and three subnets. So if I take a look at the VPC, so that's the default VPC that I got. That's the CIDR block 172.31.0.0 slash 16. And it's using this main route table. So there is this route table and what else? And the main network ACL. So those two are uh, got created automatically and then we also have an internet gateway so that's the internet gateway all the traffic from all the subnets has to go through this internet gateway to reach uh, the internet okay let's look at the subnets so we have three subnets on the three different availability zones eu west 2a 2b and 2z uh, sorry 2c and we have the different uh, subnet ip seeders here ip ranges here and if you look at the VPC ID, they are all part of the same VPC. So we have one VPC, three subnets, and one per region. Sorry, one per availability zone. Okay, so we have three subnets. So how do we know if it's a private subnet or a public subnet? So I was talking about private subnet and public subnet. So in order to find out, we need to look at the route table and I will show you how to find it out. So if I take this one, for example, basically these three subnets, all these three subnets have the same route table attached to it. So if you scroll to the right, if you look at the route table, so that's the main route table. There's no additional route tables, one route table attached to all the subnets. So if we look at that route table, then we will be able to find out whether it's a public subnet or a private subnet. Okay, so if you take a look at the route table here. Okay, so that's the route table and you can see here. So that's the traffic within the VPC. So we saw 172.310.0 slash 16. That's the VPC network range. So anything that is local, that is VPC is allowed within the VPC and 0 .0 .0 .0, 0.0.0.0. So that's the traffic going to the internet will have to go via the internet gateway. So that's the internet gateway ID, which means this is a private network. If it's a public, if it's a private network, did I say private or public? This is a public network because uh, in the route table, the traffic to the internet is going via internet gateway. All right. So if it were a private network, then you wouldn't see the internet gateway here. You will see a NAT gateway. Uh, because private networks won't be talking to the internet gateway directly. It will go through the NAT gateway. Yep. So we have three different uh, subnets all attached to the same uh, route tables. And if you look at the network ACL, we can see. So that's the inbound rule and that's the outbound rule. Okay. So unlike security groups, Network ACL, you have to define both inbound rule and the outbound rule, but we will see that in detail in a separate video. In the security group, you only define what is allowed in. If you don't define anything, that's basically blocked. Everything is blocked by default. And the only thing allowed is what you specify in the security group. 
Whereas in the network ACL, you have to specify what is coming in, what is going out, and whether you can allow or deny. And the rules are evaluated in the order. So 100, that's the first rule. 200, 300, uh, it will be evaluated in the order. So we will see that in a separate video. But for this, uh, this network ACL inbound rule, if you see all traffic is allowed. And you can see the next line, it says all traffic is denied but that won't get executed because uh, the first rule that matches will be uh, applied. So in this case, all incoming traffic are allowed uh, to the subnet and all outgoing traffic are allowed in this subnet. And this network ACL has been attached to all the three subnets. So network ACL, if you look at that, all the three subnets have the same network ACL, has the same uh, route tables and everything. So we don't have any NAT gateways at the moment because we don't have any private subnets. So that's the uh, the default set of uh, resources that you get when you create your AWS account. So one default VPC and then three subnets depending on how many availability zones you have. Internet gateway, a main row table, a main network ACL and so on. All right, so I just wanted to explore how my VPC subnets and everything has been set up. And that's it for this video. And in my next video, I'll show you how to create a VPC with a public subnet. All right, and then we will go through uh, route table, network ACLs, internet gateway, and what other things it creates. All right, thank you so much for your time watching this video. If you've got any questions, please leave me a comment. If you like this video, please share and subscribe. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.